Today I'm going to talk about a problem called weighted bipartite matchings. This problem shows up a lot. One place might be at a ride sharing company. So imagine you have a bunch of cars and passengers. And you have to decide which car do you dispatch to which passenger. As a metric, we might want to minimize something like the total distance traveled or the total waiting time. Let's say we go with waiting time. Here in this assignment, the total waiting time is 4 plus 7 plus 14, which is 25 minutes. But there are lots of other possible assignments. Can we find the one with the least total waiting time? We can model this problem mathematically as a graph. First, the objects we have are the cars and passengers. These are the nodes of the graph. The number on the edge will be the time it takes for the car to reach the person. Our goal then is to find an assignment that ensures two things. First, all of the people are assigned a car. And second, this assignment has the least total waiting time. For each assignment, the total waiting time is the sum of the edges in the matching. In our example, the weight represents time, but in other applications it can represent things like cost or resources, among many other things. In this case, this matching has the least total weight, but how do we design an algorithm to find this matching? That's the goal of this video. Also, so far I've been talking about minimum weight matchings, but finding a maximum weight matching is essentially the same thing. And we'll also be sticking to bipartite graphs, which are graphs where the vertices can be split into two sets, and there are no internal edges in each set. Algorithms on graphs that are not bipartite are much more complicated, and we won't be talking about them. In a previous video, I talked about how we can find the largest size matching in an unweighted graph. Because it's unweighted, the algorithm in that video doesn't consider edge weights, so it can return a matching that's suboptimal. I tried to make this video so that you don't really need to watch that video beforehand, but if you do want more information, I'll leave a link to that video below. Here's the plan for this video. First, I'm not going to talk directly about matchings, but about a related problem called vertex cover. These two problems are very closely related. Next, we'll extend this idea of vertex cover to weighted graphs, and also relate this back to maximum weight matchings. This gives us all of the tools we need to talk about the Hungarian algorithm, which is the classic method for solving this problem. Finally, I'll finish by talking about some of the history and context surrounding these ideas. Okay, let's start with the first item, vertex covers. A vertex cover is kind of like the opposite of a matching. A set of vertices is a vertex cover if it contains at least one endpoint of every edge. If we take just vertex 1, these three edges have an endpoint at vertex 1. And if we take vertices 7 and 9, they cover these yellow edges. This set of 6 vertices covers all of the edges in the graph, so this is a vertex cover. Now, finding a vertex cover isn't hard. You can always just take the set of all vertices, and this would trivially cover all edges. So the goal should not be to find any vertex cover, but to find the vertex cover with the smallest size. How do we find the smallest size vertex cover? Maybe we can try to remove vertices, starting with the ones that cover the least number of edges. Now we have a vertex cover of size 4, but could there be an even smaller one? For every edge in the matching, we need at least one of its endpoints to be in the vertex cover. Otherwise, that edge won't be covered. For example, if we remove vertex 4, then edge 4a is no longer covered. The implication here is that the size of any vertex cover is at least the size of any matching. Or in other words, the smallest vertex cover is at least the size of the largest matching. This means for our example, we can't have a vertex cover of size 3. What is not obvious is that in a bipartite graph, this inequality is actually an equality. And this result is called Connex theorem. If I wanted to find the size of the smallest vertex cover, I can just use an algorithm for maximum matchings instead. Note that bipartite is explicitly stated because if the graph is not bipartite, this statement is not true. To see this, consider this graph. 
This graph isn't bipartite because you can't split it into two sets with no internal edges. And any two edges must touch at a vertex, so the size of the maximum matching is 1. But any one vertex can't cover all three edges, so the minimum vertex cover is strictly larger than the maximum matching. So Connick's theorem only applies to bipartite graphs, like the ones here. Here, we have a bunch of maximum matchings and minimum vertex covers. From these examples, notice that for every edge in the matching, we never have both endpoints in the vertex cover. This is because if both endpoints are included, then the vertex cover will be strictly larger than a matching, so this violates Connick's theorem. We can also switch it around. Suppose we're given this graph, and we're told that this is a minimum vertex cover. To find a maximum matching, we know that it can't have both endpoints in the vertex cover, so we can ignore those edges. Then, there exists a maximum matching within this remaining graph. So knowing the minimum vertex cover is going to remove some edges and is going to simplify the search for a maximum matching, we're going to use a similar idea when we move on to graphs with edge weights. Now, vertex covers aren't directly helpful to us, but both vertex covers and Connex theorem can be extended to graphs with edge weights. The weighted version of vertex cover will be central to our algorithm. On a high level, Connick's theorem presents a duality between matchings and vertex covers. One problem wants to maximize, whereas the other problem wants to minimize. One problem deals with edges, while the other problem deals with vertices. Now, we've generalized matchings to include edge weights. How do we generalize vertex cover? It seems like we need to do something with the vertices. Now, vertex cover generalizes to a problem, which I'll call weighted covering. Here, we assign numbers to vertices, and we call these numbers prices. For each edge, we want the prices of its endpoints to be at least the edge weight. Let's look at an example. The numbers next to the vertices are the prices. We can verify that for each edge, the sum of the prices of its endpoints is at least the weight of the edge. So this is a valid weighted covering. Note that these vertex prices can be negative. Vertex prices are also not fixed, it's something that we set. Similar to vertex cover, the goal isn't to find any covering, but to find the covering with the minimum total price. For our example, the sum of the vertex prices is 13. But this isn't the minimum. We can decrease the price on vertex 0 from 4 to 3. And this changes the total price to 12. 12 also happens to be the value of the maximum weight matching. You can probably see where I'm going with this. There exists an extension of Connick's theorem to weighted graphs called Egervari's theorem. And it states that the minimum weight covering is equal to the maximum weight matching. Although there are some conditions. The graph has to be bipartite. The edge weights need to be non-negative and there has to exist a matching where everyone is matched. However, we can always transform a graph into one that satisfies the last two conditions, so those can be easily dealt with. This result establishes a duality between max weight matching and minimum weight coverings. The definition of weighted covering does actually generalize vertex cover. For this graph, if we set the edge weights to 1 and find a maximum weight matching, then we get a maximum size matching. Since the weights are all 1, the prices just need to be 0 or 1. This is one possible set of prices that we can have. Now, we can map the prices to a vertex cover. The vertices with a price of 1 are the ones in the vertex cover. I also mentioned before that a maximum matching can't have both of its endpoints in a minimum vertex cover, so we know that this edge can't be in a maximum matching. The maximum matching has to be these two edges then. In the context of prices, the edges that remain are precisely the ones where the sum of the prices is equal to the edge weight. The same idea extends to weighted graphs as well. Here are the optimal prices for this graph. The sum of all of these prices is 28. 
Now, Edgar Barry's theorem tells us that there exists a matching with the same weight as these nodes. So there is a matching with a weight of 28. For the matching to have the same weight, it would have to match every vertex in the graph. And it can also only contain edges whose weights are equal to the prices of its endpoints. Maybe pause here and understand why the last two bullet points have to follow. If either of these conditions is not true, then we'll have a matching with a weight smaller than the optimal weighted covering. So that can't happen. Because of these observations, we only need to consider the edges that satisfy the last bullet point. And we can form a separate graph with only those edges. And we'll give it a special name. We'll call it the equality graph. Now, you just need to find the largest matching in this equality graph. If we sum up the weights for this matching, it sums up to 28, which matches the total node price. So basically, given optimal node prices, all we need to do is form the equality graph, then find a matching that matches all vertices in this graph. This will return the maximum weight matching. We now have all of the parts needed to talk about the Hungarian algorithm. Finally, it's time to talk about the Hungarian algorithm. Remember that our goal is to find a matching that matches all vertices and maximizes or minimizes the total edge weight. We'll focus on maximizing, but minimizing is very similar and requires just a few changes. We assume that edge weights are non-negative and there exists a matching that matches everyone. We can always transform a graph into one that satisfies these assumptions. I'll leave a reference if you want more details below. The main result we saw so far is that, given optimal prices, the maximum weight matching lies in the equality graph. This motivates the following high-level idea. First, we maintain a weighted covering and a matching in all iterations. Then, given the prices, we can form the equality graph and then find the largest matching inside this graph. If the largest matching doesn't match all the vertices, then we need to adjust the node prices. The idea is to alternate between updating the prices and updating the matching until we converge to the optimal solution. Now, this might all seem pretty confusing, so I'll walk through an example. We first need to set initial prices to the vertices such that we have a valid covering. One way to do this is to first set a price of zero to all of the nodes on the right. Now, what price can we set for vertex zero? These two edges are connected to vertex 0. We need the price of v0 plus the price of v7 to be at least 6, and the price of v0 plus the price of v8 to be at least 9. So the price of v0 has to be at least 9. For vertex 1, we can do the same thing. First, we find all of the incident edges. Then we set the price to be the maximum of the weights of the incident edges. We can do this for all of the other vertices as well. The current total vertex price is 31. From these vertex prices, we can form the equality graph. We then find the largest size matching in the equality graph. This can be done with the augmenting path algorithm I discussed in the previous video, so I won't talk about this too much. Now, the current total weight for our matching is 23. If these two numbers are not the same, that we're not done yet. We need to increase the size of the matching. Vertex 3 is not matched currently. Also, vertex 9 on the other side is not matched. If there's an augmenting path from 3 to 9, which is a path that alternates between being in and out of the matching, then we can increase the size of our matching. We can see here that the only path out of 3 ends in a dead end. So we need to change the node prices to include more edges into the equality graph. The idea is to change the prices for these highlighted vertices. These are the vertices reachable from 3. What if we subtract 1 from the yellow nodes on the left and add 1 to the yellow nodes on the right? If we do this, then notice that edges 3, 5, and 4, 5 are still in the equality graph because I subtracted 1 from one endpoint and added 1 to the other endpoint so the total hasn't changed. 
but it does add edge 36 into the equality graph. Notice that we can't change the price by more than one, because then the weight of edge 36 will be larger than its endpoints, so it won't be a valid covering. After updating the prices, the total node price decreases to 30. Now, there's still no path from 3 to 9, so we find all of the nodes reachable from 3, then update their prices. This time, we can subtract 2 from the left and add 2 to the right. Then, the total vertex price drops to 28, and the edge 4, 9 enters the equality graph. Now, finally, we have an augmenting path from 3 to 9. So we can swap assignments along this path to get a larger matching. Now, the new matching weight is 28, which is the same as the total node price, so we know that this matching is optimal by Agravari's theorem. Let's run this on a larger graph. We essentially take these two concepts, weighted covering and max weight matching, and iteratively cycle through two phases. The first phase tries to increase the weight of the matching. When the weight of the matching can't be improved any further, we start the second phase, which is to decrease the total node price. Then we try to improve the matching again, and so on. The prices and the matchings help each other, so the prices limit the edges we consider for the matching, and the matching helps inform which prices to update. Finally, we converge at a solution where the total price equals the total weight of the matching. It's not obvious why it converges, by the way, so I'm going to include some references if you want to learn more. The algorithm itself is not that easy to understand, and I don't think it's that intuitive, but I feel like the ideas ultimately come together very nicely. So I hope you find all of this quite interesting. Finally, let me conclude by providing some history and broader context. This here is Harold Kuhn, and he's the founder of the Hungarian algorithm. He's a big name in optimization. He's one of the Ks in the KKT conditions, which you might encounter if you study nonlinear optimization. Kuhn himself is not a Hungarian, he's actually an American. But he was so inspired by both Koenig and Egervari, who are both Hungarians, that he decided to name it the Hungarian algorithm in honor of them. A bit later on, another American mathematician named James Munkries looked at this algorithm and proved the runtime is polynomial. So sometimes the Hungarian algorithm is also called the kuhn munkries algorithm. I first heard of Munkries when I was an undergrad studying topology. Munkries is the author of a very popular topology textbook that's widely used. So I thought it was a pretty cool connection when I saw the name Munkries pop up in this problem. An interesting thing we observed so far is how matchings and vertex covers seem to be so similar. It begs the question, does there exist other problems that are also very similar? The theory underlying their relationship is linear programming duality. Every linear program has a dual program. Maximum matchings and minimum vertex covers are dual problems of each other. A linear program and its dual always have the same optimal objective value. Therefore, Connex's theorem is just a special case of linear programming duality. The same thing can be said of weighted matchings and coverings. So Evergari's theorem is also just a special case of LP duality. The Hungarian algorithm is an example of the primal dual method. In this method, we maintain a dual solution, which are the prices here, and try to improve it in each iteration. This primal dual method is a general method that can be extended to other problems as well. If you want to learn more about matchings but haven't seen my previous video, I encourage you to check it out. In the Hungarian algorithm, there is a subroutine that requires finding a maximum cardinality matching. In that video, I go into much greater detail on how you can find that. As usual, if you liked this video, please leave a like. I'll see you next time.